this out. Hey everybody, I'm Giles and this is JDM World. So I've been living with the Klipsch RP600Ms for a while now and you know, they sound great and I've mated them with the subwoofer and put them on a new stand, added some cool cabling, whole bunch of stuff, right? But I really want to know how deep can these things play on their own? So I looked around and I, I didn't find any good information about what their frequency response looks like in a room. So today, what we're gonna do is pull out REW and we're gonna run a couple of sweeps just to see what these look like in room. Now remember, this isn't trying to measure what the speakers themselves can do in an anechoic chamber or something like that. So we're, we're not doing that. What we're doing is real world testing in a real room and the room has real impacts on what you're hearing. So this is gonna be more like what you would do in your home and what you would experience. So as you know, the speakers that you get are not the speakers that you hear, meaning that what you're hearing is the room and the speakers. And today we're gonna to do a quick measurement and see what that looks like. Now, if you don't know what the RP600Ms are, let's take a quick look before that so you can catch up and see what we're talking about. And then we'll move into the measurements. Okay, just a quick few notes for those that aren't familiar with the REW measuring process. So what we've got obviously are the speakers themselves and these are the ones that we're gonna measure. And to use that, we're gonna use a tool called REW or Room EQ Wizard. Now it might be hard to see the screen right now, but on this laptop, we've got the software installed and I've got this hooked up via HDMI into my AVR. So I'm gonna send the test sweeps from this laptop into the AVR which will come out of the speakers. And then over here in the main listening position, I've got a U-Mic 1 setup, and this is gonna pick up the output from the speakers and send it back to the PC for analysis. All right, now we're gonna run three sweeps, uh, a left, a right, and then a combined. And uh, right now we're set on right, so the output. And I'm going to make sure that the AVR is in direct mode. So uh, your, whatever your AVR will have different modes for that, but make sure it's in, in direct because that will turn off all of the uh, DSP processing. And what you don't want are subwoofers playing and crossovers working. You just want to get the full output to your speakers. So let's do a level check and see what we got going on here. Level's okay. And that was right speaker only. So let's go ahead and we'll start this sweep. We'll move over to the all SPL and uh, we're going to smooth that out a little bit so it's not so crazy. Okay, now we're going to measure the left side. So we go back up to measure. Let's change this to left and start. And now finally, we're going to measure both together. So we'll come back here and go to left, right, and we will start. And just, uh, just so you know, we, I came in and I set this earlier to do a sweep from 10 to 20,000. All right. So now that we've got our three measurements, I'm gonna mark this one as right, left. I'll save this off and we'll move up to another PC where I can sit down and talk through this a little bit easier with everyone. Okay, I'm at my editing station now, so let's take a look at this. But before we do that, we need to 
get this a little cleaned up so we can see what's going on. So um, I, we can kind of see this. Maybe we should set the scale in this way. Let's click here and then let's do a little bit of this. Let's minus this again. Maybe we will, let's just say change the limits. So let's change this to 10 and then we'll change this one to 20,000. And we'll bump this to 100 and let's call it 110. And then bottom end of 30. And let's apply these. All right, and that gets us pretty much full screen there. Awesome. Now, let's go through and we will now, under controls, we're going to smooth this out to on 148th. And we'll apply the smoothing. So let's look at the combined right and left and talk about that just a little bit and see what we've got going on. So this area here around 70, 80 hertz, um, my room is about 14 feet and uh, this huge null right here is uh, typically because because of the wavelength and the size of the room is they're interacting. So this isn't the speaker and nor is this, but this, this is the room causing this. Um, I can put some treatments up, which I plan to do at some point in the who knows when future uh, that will help resolve this, but this item and this item are likely to be room interactions. Now, um, everything here is, you know, it's fairly linear. It's not too bad. I mean, yeah, there's, you know, everything from 95 down to 80 hertz, um, but it's, uh, it's not too bad. Um, and then over here, you can see things get a little bit of hump, uh, 35, and then after that, it drops down um, to the to the abyss. So um, for us, it looks like in the room, uh, these these make it down to about 35. Then they tank out, and then maybe 32, 33. Let's see exactly. Yeah, 33. They you know that's uh, that's where they really go downhill. Um, but you know th there aren't any subwoofers in these. You know they're just little six and a half inch drivers. So I think that's absolutely fine. Now, this is what we look like summed. Let's take a look and see what the left and right look like. Um, so you'll notice first thing that as we put these up, um, the amplitude is lower. So the volume is lower. So the decibel is lower um, because, you know, with two speakers, right, you've got twice the power and twice the, the cone action going on. So that's why you see the, uh, the how these sum up. So let's uh, turn on left and right and we'll turn off the combined. And you can really see the crazy stuff that goes on with rooms here. It's kind of enlightening to, to see that even though these speakers are just, uh, you know, six feet apart, seven feet apart, um, the that those positioning locations make a huge difference in the room. Um, and then let me click on right left one more time. You'll see how that, you know, some things sum and, and some things don't like, uh, you know, see this null on this speaker and then this hump here. Um, you know, you'll see how this, uh, the sum of the two is in between that. So you can, you can see how the acoustics of the room are interacting as these two speakers, um, you know, have a, have either constructive or deconstructive summation on the, the output. Um, but in general, you know, we, we got some, some drops right here. So, you know, when we look at both of them, you know, you should see it pretty low on that side. Yep. It's, it's way down there. Um, is there anything else interesting going on? This, this is kind of interesting. So I would expect to see, uh, you know, the blue line somewhere through the middle there and yeah, it hits here, it comes up a little bit there. Um, all this stuff is pretty close. I mean, it's within five decibels, right? Um, and it looks like in general up here, uh, you know, the high frequencies on the, what is the red? on the right are a little bit more subdued than than the left. That's interesting. I would have expected these to be a little closer. Um, I might pull those speakers and just set them right beside each other or put them actually in the exact same spot and test just to see um, if there is some kind of significant difference in the drivers themselves 
um, that would be interesting because if there is that that's obviously bad times but they're they're pretty close right uh, so we'll turn this back on and just take one more look at what we've got going on here with the summed uh, room response obviously some big problems to, to look at here with uh, room treatments to try and fix that um, and then from a low end point of view you know down to 30 Hertz just call it 30 um, you know where it's kind of on par with the rest of the environment and after that it just kind of dumps down so this is where you'd want to add in subwoofer support and I would likely you know uh, for home theater you know you cross over the the prevailing wisdom is typically around 80 Hertz and uh, you could use a sub to try and help fix uh, this uh, this area here too by moving it around so you might smooth that out a little bit just by using the subwoofer and then this big hump would uh, would go away with the crossover on these speakers too so that uh, that would fix this up a bit a little bit of EQ and I think you're gonna be in pretty good shape but uh, that's that's what we're looking like in room with the RP 600 M's all right, hopefully that's been helpful and gives you a little bit more information as you think about the RP600M and maybe if it's right for you in your room. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please hit that like and subscribe button and a comment would be appreciated. Actually, 5,238 comments would be awesome along with that number of subscriptions. So if you know that many people, please call them. Um, also, we're running a really cool contest in October and November. So check my video feed for that. It's something that you definitely wanna take advantage of. Thanks everybody.